Morning, everybody. Just started recording backwards. I didn't have the phone turned around. Uh, today is Tuesday. Oh, I forgot to look at the phone. See the time. Day. Tuesday, November 10th, okay? 2015. Because all these videos go up. You know, hopefully they'll be up for a while. I wasn't, I wanted to read maybe a little bit before I talked. I'm reading scripture every night. But I was just getting up, and I think I'm going to have a full day today. <coughs> so I thought, this is a chance to make it Tuesday. Um, I might talk a little bit about uh, what I'm reading in the Gospel. I'm reading through the Book of Numbers, and also through the Prophets, I'm in Ezekiel. Also through the New Testament and the Book of Acts, and through the Gospels. And I'm in uh, Matthew again. So, all of this is kind of a progression. I'll talk a little bit about um, what we mean when we say systematic theology, and is it, is it good to try to read the scripture and to try to see an overall overriding purpose to all of it. I think that is good. Some of the critics, that's what systematic theology is. So I didn't want to do this. But it's sort of like you're reading the collection of books we have. One of the uh, great churchmen said, um, Scripture is uh, like a library. Okay? And it is, because it's a collection of books from many years written. And yet, the theme all the way from the Old Testament, the writing, they used to debate. Scholars used to, you heard me talk about the critical method and all, and a lot of the scholars in the 1800s were very questioning of the Bible. And then historically they said, these stories that we read about, Abraham, dating all the way back to stories of Moses, they were saying if they really occurred, you know, that many thousands of years ago they didn't have writing we didn't actually have writing at that time uh, some of the scholars in the 1800s were saying we writing of documents and all did not exist but then in the 1900s there were various discoveries this is really old most people know this but some might not be aware of it but then we found other ancient writings from other civilizations that showed, no, they, they were writing at that time. They were documenting. Therefore, the critics who said, the stories that you read about all the way dating back to Abraham and dating back to the book of Genesis, they, they did have writing at that time. And it was possible for these accounts to be recorded historically. See, these were proofs that we had, we found along the way. I want to mention the two, uh, this week the news is now on the two, now these are black officers, cops, that pursued a white man by the name, I think his name is Flu, which is the name of a famous atheist who converted to believe, whose name was Anthony Flu. When I taught about the atheists, I taught about him. But this man happened to be the same name as Flu. This man who was shot and his six-year-old autistic son killed, shot and killed in the, in the vehicle while wearing the seatbelt. Now, when this case first came up this last week, they said they reviewed the video of the killing, and it's horrendous. Now, this is what the law enforcement is saying, because they're not releasing that video of what happened. And when it first came out, they set these two black officers bond or bail at a million dollars, which meant they saw some really bad stuff on that video. At first it was reported that these two officers, they had different positions. One was a cop there in Louisiana, the other had another job, but they were working a different thing like warrant officers, another thing. So, it's kind of like, they, uh, from what I understand, they're not in uniform. 
you had a couple of cases. You had a rapper or a famous musician, I think, out in California two weeks ago. His car was broken down, black guy. But he's not a gang guy or anything. They just had his funeral. And another officer guy came up. He didn't know it was a cop. As far as uh, I understand, didn't identify himself and approached that car that was stuck, this famous musician guy was stuck on the side of the road. And that night, he, this other guy pulled up undercover in plain clothes that maybe didn't identify himself and walks up to the vehicle with a gun. The rapper, the musician, who his family says, look, he was not one of those, you know, gang guys. He got out of his car thinking he was going to get robbed or mugged on the side of the road. He was waiting for a tow truck, and that undercover cop killed him. Well, in this case of the man who was shot and his autistic son killed, six-year-old son. They're saying, at first they said, well, these other cops had a warrant for him. But then it came out, there were no warrants. Then I heard something. This is how you decipher these. You watch a lot of news shows and you get stuff. They said that black cop who killed him knew him. It's maybe one of those cases where these officers have, they're going to go after their ex, exes, or they're going to go after this one, or the, and they know them. They spent a lot of time pursuing, uh, committing illegal crimes, out covering up illegal crimes they commit. A lot of time is consumed with that, and the average public is not aware of that. So this officer, these two black guys, shot that white kid, that autistic kid, and killed him. And the lawyer said he has not seen the video yet, the lawyer for the man. He said, but there's reason to believe that when they were shot in that vehicle, Mr. Flew had his hands up. Don't shoot us, don't shoot us. Boom, you and we're killing your kid. Yeah. We've got a very real side. I teach Western classics. See, John, one time I watched a sheriff, I think it was a sheriff. It was on like one of the conservative shows, Hannity or something. He was defending all this. Because they wanted to have a black person. That's why I'm saying it, actually. Because it's, in this case, it's two black cops that shot that. And it's just as bad. And some of the conservatives or some of the liberals won't, they'll only show the view that they hold. They won't show the other view. Some news people won't cover this one because they're only saying it's only white cops killing black people. No, no. In this case, you judge righteous judgment. And in this case, it's two black officers killing a white kid. Just as bad. So, what do you think about all those black guys that are defending all these Actual, the other cases where blacks are killed. Okay, told my young viewers, they're referred to as Uncle Toms. You know, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. And that is a classic of Western literature. And I'm not going to teach you it. I, I didn't read it that recently. Her father was a preacher, famous preacher, Lyman Beecher. I read books by Lyman Beecher. <laughs> you know, within the church, Uncle Tom's Cabin, it just dealt with sort of like some of the stuff from Mark Twain. Dealt with issues that, in a way, th that people were not dealing with at that time. And when we refer to Uncle Tom's, we're referring to people that maybe they themselves were black, But you could use them still for your purpose, even if you do not really defend the rights of black people, you can always find maybe a black person that would even agree with your view. And all people that disagree politically are not Uncle Tom's. I just was giving you a view that sometimes, even in society, 
a black person might have a political view that is a conservative view, just like many have views that are liberal, and they allow those views to skew their thinking, and they cannot judge righteously, meaning in every case, whether it's me on this video defending that white man flu and his six-year-old autistic boy, or whether it's me defending Sandra Bland, you do not do these things based on your political aisle. You do them because you're supposed to speak out, regardless of what it is. Now, in the... That's why I mentioned that. And Uncle Tom's Cabin was one of the books that dealt with that at a day where you, it wasn't being dealt with. Um, I read the parable last night. Now, I wanted you to see in the parables that I'm just mentioning that they deal with the issue of Jesus coming as the fulfillment of the prophets, everything that was spoken in the Old Testament, and Jesus comes to fulfill that. So at the time of the first century, for the Jewish person, everything was prepared for them. The patriarchs, patriarchs are the Old Testament figures like Abraham, and when we say patriarch, we mean these were like the fathers of families, but also back then, they were also the fathers of the areas or regions that you came under their covering or authority. And so when you have a queen, we say matriarch. When you have a um, male figure who has that type of an influence, Abraham also had his own personal army we read about in Scripture, people, servants that were fighting. So those are patriarchs, these Old Testament men that were influential figures. And... In the parable that Jesus, I read last night, he said a certain man had this wedding for his son. And this is a key part. Don't forget these parts. And he said he he sent his servants out to get those people who were bidden to the marriage. They had a special invitation. Okay. Jesus in that parable is saying, these are the Jewish people of his time who all of the things were prepared for them, okay? They were bitten, okay? It was all leading up to the prophets, the fulfillment of the law, everything that God did in the Old Testament with the nation of Israel, with the Jewish people, all of it was for them. You see? It says salvation is of the Jews. So in this parable, when Jesus says the master who prepared a wedding for his son, it's this is his, this is God sending Jesus, the son, and it's time for the embrace that the people were supposed to embrace. And those that were bidden with the Jewish people, the Jewish nation. And it said they didn't want to come. And then they made another effort. <laughs> they didn't want to come. And in these parables, they, the, oh, more than one of them, they wind up taking the servants, they take the prophets that were sent to them year after year after year, they beat them, they kill them, some they stone. These are all prophecies of even the execution of John the Baptist. So Jesus is speaking about the time right then where he was in fulfilling the promise of God as the Messiah to those who were bidden, the Jewish nation, those, well, after they don't want to come, uh, he, the master says, go ahead, go out into the highways, hedges, go everywhere, and just get anybody in. Those are the Gentiles. That was the gospel and the message. Now Paul will even say in the book of Acts to his Jewish brothers, he said, you you judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Now we will fulfill the scripture that you are light to the Gentiles. Paul's quoting these Old Testament prophets. says, and this was prophesied that the light will now go to the Gentiles. So this is a theme we're going to see all through the New Testament. So then, this is an interesting part of this parable. I mentioned this before. The master of the house says, now go out and gather everyone in. Good and bad. Good and bad. You see even this in the parable of when the fish nets are coming in. They were good and bad. 
But notice in this parable, Jesus is saying that the man who's preparing this wedding for his son, he's the man himself who's a type of God. Symbol of God says, go and gather them all. And they gather them all, good and bad. Let's see, the missionaries going out, the apostles going out, the believers going out, saying, come on, everybody. But then, the wedding's there, and it says, but there was someone that was there that didn't have a wedding garment. He wasn't part of the good, he's been the bad type of the spirit, those that didn't have clothed in righteousness. And then the master says, how did you get in here? They brought him in. See, the church has this authority to call all to the court. That's what that's saying there. So you can apply it to that. The church says, come on. We're all at the court of God now. How does the church do that, John? I give to you a kingdom like my father has given me. You speak truth. You speak truth. That's why these videos of all these incidents these last few years. I, I saw one black guy say, you know what? We don't need guns. We don't need weapons. He says, we now have cameras. It's a good thing. He said, because we don't need to take up arms. We just video the things we've been saying have been happening for years. The power of the pen, the recording of words, and seeing these things. So, they brought them all in, good and bad. And the judge spoke to those that didn't even know him that were there. They had no concept of, they, they thought nobody would see. Surely I'm reading the Psalms, it says, the wicked say nobody sees us. I'm reading Ezekiel. It's a pretty tough chapter I read last night. Go out, there's this prophet. <laughs> Go out, and one of them, it says he has an inkhorn. An inkhorn. A writing thing, a writing utensil. I like the old King James, horn and writing implement. They're going to call these, I forget what chapter it was in Ezekiel, but these are these visions, these are these things that Ezekiel's having. And it basically said, go through the city, and mark all the people, see, the, see the same thing in Revelation, mark all the people that are broken over what's happening, that are really concerned with justice in society. Put a mark on them. And then these others come in. There were six, and they were going to go through and destroy. And everybody without the mark, it said, young and old man, this was the, the judgment of God saying, not a physical go out and kill but God's judgment beginning to come. And so, in this parable, this man that came in, and, and the master said, how'd you get here? And he's speechless. The answer of how he got there was the, the servants. See, the people of God can draw everybody into the court. So come on. You all, <laughs> a big thing about wickedness in Scripture is if they can get away with all these underhanded things secretly and nobody will know, they can hide and no, nobody will ever speak, then they get away with it. It's darkness. But we have the ability, we have the kingdom that God says, blessed is he that overcomes to him. Will I grant to sit with me on my throne? You will have the same aspects. Jesus says he judges things through his word. He says the city of God is compact. And all the tribes, Old Testament imagery, and all the tribes come up around the ark, around that testimony. It said there are thrones, set thrones of David. And that's a picture of the communion of God. That we're all here in the presence of God. And even we bring those in that don't have garments, that know nothing about any of this kingdom. And you say, come, I'm calling you into this court now. And God, and you will give account to God. So, in the parable, that man is judged, or judgment comes upon outer darkness, and the same thing I was reading in the prophets, the same thing in Psalms, that those that 
we are all going to give an account. And society is even at a stage where it's giving an account. It's giving an account. I saw the thing again on the bombing of the hospital in Afghanistan. And when you see me say Russian plane prophecy, yeah, I'm not, those are not actual prophecies. I'm giving you what I could see just in the media that there are, you can see, there's manipulations. And they don't always want the whole story to get out. But then when more media outlets report on things, then it dribbles out. And the reason why that Doctors Without Borders group is so outraged because their hospital in Afghanistan a few weeks ago was bombed and it was targeted in that city of Kanduz in Afghanistan. And they know that the U.S. planes targeted that hospital. And most of you are saying, no, John, we didn't. It was collateral damage. It was not that. Listen to me. What probably happened? I've watched everything on this. When this initially happened, even John McCain, who's a Vietnam vet, POW, he probably still thinks till this day that this was a collateral damage incident. Now, what happened at that day, the first reporting I remember, like Reuters reporting just media outlets, AP or whatever, that you kind of get in the initial reports. And some, some of the hospital staff on the ground that next day, after many people were killed by our bombs, they said, look, some Taliban, just like the, these hospitals, doctors without borders, they treat everybody. And they said, some of the Taliban, when they're going to be getting killed, some of these groups, when they're going to be getting killed, they do run into these hospital compounds. If you thought your life is at danger, you might do that. That's kind of a thing that's known. Now, the hospitals, they don't take sides, those hospitals. And they, they're not there to protect people. But they don't want any sides using their facility to mount an attack. That's what it is. So what they're saying, the initial reports were some of those Taliban fighters did that. They ran into that compound just for safety, just sort of like a sanctuary. And a decision was made. Some of the, Af some of the Afghan fighters who we're supporting against the Taliban, some of tho those on our side claimed they were shooting from the hospital. Now, even if you're shooting from the hospital, still, we normally don't cross that line and say, go ahead and hit that hospital. In this case, we did. That's what happened. In this case, somehow on the ground, the generals from the Afghans who were in contact with our planes, a decision was made. Well, if you think you're taking fire from the compound, from the hospital, it's a legitimate target. Now, that's what they don't want people to know. And even John McCain and even most of the public does not see that. That's probably what happened from me just watching the different clips, you see? So the media would prefer to say we're doing an investigation. And, and I could tell just by the various statements I've seen the last few weeks. At first they said, no, it wasn't us. Oh, we didn't get permission. And then they said, well, actually, they're changing it. Because somewhere along this chain of events, somewhere a decision had to be made, and it was made by us. A decision had to be made whether to go ahead and target that hospital. And in that mess, somewhere they said, probably said, if you're taking fire and it's coming from the hospital, from the Taliban, to the Afghan troops who were supporting, if and the decision was made, spur of the moment, target that hospital. That's why they're mad, because we, we bombed that hospital for 30 minutes and didn't stop. And that hospital staff was on the phone saying, you're targeting us. That's why they are mad, because that was not collateral damage, like we initially were saying, and many in this country still believe. It was not a mistake where sometimes you get the wrong coordinates.
and you get the wrong building. It was not that. This is what it was. And this could be a war crime. Do you understand? And you say, so John, we did target that hospital on purpose. Yes. Because somewhere they were reporting we're taking fire and it's coming from the hospital because on the first initial days when this was reported I heard a reporter out of Reuters at AP say that's what this real story is that's how you get the real story you follow all of it before they have time to shape it to form it and that's what they said I heard that one report it said there were Taliban that ran into that hospital and that compound but the hospital staff is insisting they were not shooting from the windows but even if they were shooting, the staff would probably have to take time and say, hey, no, shooting from the building, this probably has happened multiple times. But in this case, the U.S. decided, okay, it's a legitimate target if you're taking fire from that hospital. So that's what we don't want to get out because that would mean the story about it being collateral damage is a lie. The story about it being a mistaken coordinates, which has happened in the past, just got the wrong building on our little radar. That's a lie. It was targeted. That's why this Doctors Without Borders is so mad. And if we could, in our media, just play it off like it was a mistake, and many believe that. John McCain believes that. <laughs> because there's, they're saying you need outside investigation. So, I just wanted to mention, I think we did 26 minutes, I buried my cat the other day, sweet little baby, I put her right here, you saw her on my videos, it's a little babies, I made a uh, grave for her out of my little, let me see, you got it, out of my little, uh, can't see get I put a little cat emblem, that little cat emblem was from, my sister who passed away. She had little jewelry left when I was there in the jewelry box. My mom said, oh, if you want to take some of Laura's little jewelry, and I have a cross from Laura. As a matter of fact, this is a cross from Laura. I have on that chain, my sister who died. And then I had that little cat uh, on a little journal, glue to journal, cat emblem. And I put it on baby's little grave, my little cat. <laughs> I want you to read some of those uh, parables. I'm going to probably try and add them. I want you to see that out of the parables, that they're dealing with that issue. And there's a prophecy in Isaiah that says the parables were a judgment. It said, speak to the people. And it, Jesus' parables were a judgment because it says they would have eyes and not see, ears and not hear, and their heart would be hardened. So that's why you know those parables are dealing with those issues, because that says that in Isaiah. Okay, I got another. That's going to go up. Got that yesterday. I want to get the expensive. I can't justify spending $80 for the nice merry-go-round at Home Depot. So that was 14 <laughs> Okay, let me, let me just pray for you guys instead of quoting that. Father, I, I pray you bless all of our people. I pray in all these cases, God, that we deal with this case in the Louisiana cops and all these things. We don't want uh, vengeance. We just want just judgment. That if people have died innocently or children were killed innocently and there were other... We, that, we, we want mercy on people. But, but they have to admit they can't cover up. They can't go after people. So we want we ask Father for righteousness. We do bring all these people into the court before your throne. We gather them in, that they're all here. We all stand before the throne. Jesus himself sits at the right hand of the throne of God. And the kingdom's established with mercy and with justice doing what is right. So we pray, I quote that scripture, Lord, arise, O God, and enter into your rest, even into the ark of your strength. We are your, you dwell, you tabernacle among us, so we ask for your spirit, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they might live. 
let the sign of the prisoner come before you, and according to the greatness of your power, preserve those that are appointed to death. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for you will inherit all nations.